Hi everyone. Um, so first I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, the opportunity to talk today. Uh, so my name is Quentin Ras. I'm a postdoc fellow uh, in uh, Edor Kabashi's lab at the Imagine Institute. Um, and today uh, I'll talk about uh, TBK1 mutant zebrafish uh, and what we have found in, uh, in this uh, model of ALS with uh, increased program cell death and uh, uh, dysregulation of critical pathway. Uh, so to talk, to introduce briefly uh, TBK1, uh, whose mutations have been uh, shown to be associated with ALS, uh, and even more frequently with the, the ALS FTD spectrum. Um, it's, been, uh, uh, it's been shown to, uh, uh, to regulate uh, a wide range of, uh, of processes in the cell, but mostly uh, it's been shown to regulate uh, the activity of autophagy receptors like P62 or uh, optinurins. Uh, it's been shown to be uh, involved also in uh, innate immunity through uh, regulations of uh, uh, pathogen recognition receptor pathways, uh, through the SIGA sting pathways to activate uh, the interferon signaling, and also through uh, TLR3 signaling to uh, uh, enable the translocation of NFK baby to the nucleus for uh, the production of pro inflammatory cytokines. Um, and so uh, TBK1 is believed to be uh, uh, an interesting candidate to study uh, ALS as it's uh, involved in these uh, uh, key pathways. And uh, it's been actually studied in uh, different experimental models of ALS, uh, in iPSC-derived motor neurons from uh, ALS patients with uh, TBK1 mutations. Uh, it's been shown that uh, these cells had an impaired autophagic flux. Uh, the homozygous deletions of TBK1 in mice uh, causes an, uh, an embryonic lethal phenotype, unfortunately, uh, with uh, increased cell death in the liver at uh, embryonic day 13. And uh, heterozygous deletions of TBK1 have also been studied. While uh, they do not lead uh, to a phenotype by themselves, uh, they've been mostly shown to worsen the phenotype of uh, uh, different ALS models uh, in mice like uh, the SOD, uh, SOD1 G93A. Uh, but really, the, the role of TBK1 for ALS disease onset and progression remains to be investigated. Um, so there's been an uh, interesting uh, suggestion that uh, its impact on apoptosis and inflammation could be also uh, uh, induced by uh, its effect on uh, the kinase RIPK1. Uh, but I'll talk more about that later. And um, the approach that we choose was uh, through generating complementary uh, functional genomic uh, deletion of the TBK1 genes in zebrafish. Uh, before we did that, uh, we made sure obviously that TBK1 biology was conserved in the zebrafish. Uh, and the amino acid sequence is actually very well conserved in this fish, uh, especially the kinase domain, which is a, a major functional domain of this uh, enzyme, uh, has more than 90% uh, identity. And so we, uh, we generated uh, uh, models with loss of TBK1 expression. Uh, by using uh, antisense oligonucleotide morpholino uh, that were injected in the uh, embryos at one cell stage. Uh, and in parallel, we also uh, designed a CRISPR-Cas9 strategy to induce large deletions in uh, exon 1, 2, uh, or 4, and 5 that are all uh, located in the uh, kinase domain of the TBK1 gene. And so the major uh, advantage of the zebrafish model uh, remains uh, in this uh, rapid and transparent and external uh, embryonic development, and so uh, we can uh, rapidly investigate a phenotype. And so uh, we confirmed the phenotype of uh, zebrafish that were injected with the TBK1 morpholino, um, and, and confirmed the knockdown with uh, about 50% decreased expression by Western blood. Uh, and then uh, investigated the motor behavior in the zebrafish with a, a tear test uh, that was uh, uh, introduced by Juliana earlier. And when we touch the tail of the zebrafish, uh, we can see here the trace uh, of in zebrafish injected with TBK1 morpholino, which show a, a significant decrease in their uh, motor behavior. Uh, and interestingly, when we uh, injected the fish with uh, the TBK1 human RNA, uh, we are, uh, that's sufficient to rescue the motor phenotype. And so we looked in more details uh, what was happening on the motor neuron levels uh, by imaging uh, transgenic fish, which had an uh, MNX uh, reporter uh, with a fluorescent reporter, um, and simply by counting the cells uh, in the spinal cord, uh, we found a decreased number of uh, motor neurons. 
And uh, we also uh, looked at axonal length and branching uh, and didn't found any uh, significant difference. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the phenotype of uh, morpholino injected zebrafish uh, tends to disappear after a couple of days. And so uh, we generated this uh, uh, complementary approach by, uh, by CRISPR-Cas9 uh, to induce directly deletion of the gene. Uh, so here targeting is on 4 and 5. Uh, you can see on the PCR uh, the large deletion uh, in this proband. And uh, we confirm by qPCR the, uh, the significantly decrease uh, uh, loss of uh, expression for TBK1. Um, and so we confirm that TBK1 deletion was uh, not viable after nine days. So looking at the survival rate, uh, we reach uh, about 90% mortality after uh, 10 to 12 days. And so this really suggesting that uh, TBK1 expression is uh, critical during the rough development. So again, uh, looking at the motor behavior of uh, this fish uh, that uh, had TBK1 deletions. Uh, here, uh, looking at the spontaneous behavior with a viewpoint zebra box uh, that's a semi-automated uh, uh, recording and tracking of uh, zebra fish movement. And we found a, a significant decrease uh, also of the free swimming capacity of the fish uh, from five to six days after uh, fertilization. Um, and because of the wide range of effect of, uh, of TBK1, and uh, we, we were expecting also effects on the metabolome of the zebrafish. And so uh, uh, performed metabolomic analysis uh, in this model, and uh, we found uh, similar results in uh, both strategies, deleting exon 1, 2, or 4, 5. Uh, the top pathway that was highlighted was actually related to uh, nicotinamide metabolism, NAD plus metabolism. Uh, also, purine metabolism and uh, one carbon metabolism. Um, but this one was the, the most striking one. And so uh, we wanted to see if we were able to rescue this uh, uh, this downregulation of an uh, NAD uh, metabolism by using a, a precursor that's uh, nicotinamide riboside. And simply by incubating the zebrafish larvae uh, with nicotinamide riboside um, for a couple of days with a washout to uh, limit toxicity, uh, that was sufficient to rescue the motor behavior of the fish uh, that was recorded with the viewpoint I showed earlier. Um, and so this is really showing that NAD depletion is uh, involved in a decreased swimming behavior. Uh, and it's not shown here, but unfortunately, it was not sufficient to uh, rescue the survival of uh, the TBK1 deficient larvae. So again, suggesting that uh, there are definitely other, uh, other pathways involved in a TBK1 deletion. And so uh, we performed in parallel proteomic analysis um, in this model. And we observed uh, upregulation and uh, dysregulation of uh, pathway associated with innate immunity, uh, with toll like receptor signaling, uh, response to virus infections. Uh, but really, again, the top pathway seems to be uh, related to programmed cell death with necroptosis and apoptosis up there. Uh, and uh, if you see here on the volcano plot, uh, we found upregulations of uh, critical genes like uh, Caspas 8 or uh, RIPK1. Uh, which are uh, critical for uh, necroptosis. And so, uh, interestingly, uh, there's work from the Yuan lab who suggested that uh, RIPK1 could, be, uh, uh, could play a central role in uh, ALS pathogenesis uh, and could be an interesting target uh, to use so inhibitor of uh, its activity, uh, like uh, necrostatin-1 or necrosulfonamide. Um, and I believe like such inhibitors uh, actually being investigated in clinical trials. And so uh, we tested uh, one of these inhibitors on, uh, uh, on the zebrafish larvae with a similar uh, incubation that I've shown before. And uh, um, this one was actually sufficient to uh, rescue the survival uh, of TBQ1 deleted fish. Uh, and finally, uh, we had a complementary uh, uh, proteomic analysis uh, in iPSC-derived motor neurons um, that was generated uh, in collaboration with uh, the, laborat the laboratory of uh, Alberto Catanesi in Germany. Um, and uh, by analyzing the, uh, both data sets from uh, TBK1 motor neurons and TBK1 zebrafish, um, we looked at uh, the list of genes that were dysregulated in both uh, data sets uh, and did an uh, enrichment analysis. And uh, we found uh, metabolic pathways being uh, highly dysregulated. Uh, again, necroptosis that we've seen in the zebrafish, 
But interestingly, we've also found uh, pathways rela uh, related to uh, neurodegeneration, uh, and especially uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis pathway, the cake pathway. And when we look in more details uh, at these genes associated with ALS pathways, uh, quite surprisingly, we found that uh, all these genes seem to be associated with uh, mRNA metabolism and nucleocytoplasmic transport. So that uh, seems to be suggesting a link between uh, TBK1 and mRNA metabolism. Um, and so the quick take-home message to summarize, uh, we've seen that TBK1 knockdown in zebrafish induces an early phenotype. Uh, the deletion of the gene uh, induces a strong phenotype and a, a reduced survival. Uh, these fish have an NAD metabolism dysregulation and uh, as well as uh, increased uh, necroptosis or BRIPK1 regulated apoptosis. Uh, and finally, uh, there's uh, data that suggests that mRNA metabolism could be involved in uh, the TBK1 dependent maintenance of uh, motor neuron function and survival. Uh, and with this, uh, I would like to thank all the people involved in this work, uh, from Edo Kabashi's lab, especially uh, Greg Awi, who has been the, ma the main investigator in this study. Uh, and I want to thank you for your, your attention, and uh, happy to take questions. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, I might ask one. Uh, what's the, the link you could make between NAD, met, NAD metabolism uh, in the metabolomics and uh, necroptosis, uh, uh, apoptosis pathway that, that you pinpoint using uh, proteomics? How do you link these two, these two pathways? Uh, um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think there are uh, clear evidence linking both pathways. Uh, I mean, so the NAD uh, is uh, obviously involved in a lot of different uh, metabolic uh, pathways. Uh, there seems to be also a link with a fatty acid oxidation defect. Uh, so we could imagine a link with also a mitochondrial defect and uh, enabling uh, something like apoptosis. And, uh, did did, did you have a look to the uh, WD, valerian degeneration pathway in your fish? Which, which is which uh, one? Sorry, WLDS, uh, the uh, which is related uh, directly uh, to the NAD metabolism. I don't know if it's related to necroptosis or, or apoptosis. No, I do not know either. Sorry. Okay. Any Munya? Yes, to find the link, I have uh, uh, just. Uh, I'm wondering if you got a look on uh, uh, the link between TBK1 deletion and the cascade of NPK ulquan that control mitophagy, and what about my mitophagy in your model uh, that, could, that could fit with this equilibrium, this equilibrium between apoptosis, uh, way to degrade whole cell and uh, weight, and the autophagy or mitophagy to degrade uh, specific organelles. And since there is a molecular link between when there is a lot of mitophagy, there is uh, less uh, apoptosis and vice versa. So probably there is a molecular link that it is missing in order to to distinct to to distinct to make distinction between uh, your phenotype and uh, with the any day uh, uh, also uh, 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 therapeutic approach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Like uh, that's one of the uh, major hypotheses, I guess. It's just a, a little surprising that we did not find more. Uh, uh, proof of uh, autophagy dysregulation in this model, actually, but uh, but that's likely to be uh, to be involved. Okay. Did did you check the size of the of the fiber muscle fibers in your TBK? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, might have this results actually uh, right here. Uh, yes, and there was there were no differences uh, from what we've seen. So no, not the same phenotype than in first knockout. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any, uh, if there's no more questions, then we can move to the next speaker. Thank you. One question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's one more question. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, great, great talk. Uh, I, I ask, uh, did you observe uh, other uh, different morphology uh, phenotype on your uh, fishes after five days post-fecundation, like uh, swing bladder uh, default uh, or something else? Um, so we haven't found any uh, difference for the swimming bladder. Uh, I think there was a difference uh, regarding the liver of the fish, actually. There seems to be a, 
uh, a link between uh, probably the NAD metabolism defect and uh, uh, an effect on the, on the liver uh, in this fish. It tends to have an hepatomegaly, actually. Uh, 